Okay, so in this lab, we need to configure static routes to enable IP connectivity between hosts on the left and hosts on the right. As an example, if I open up a console on PC1 and try and ping 172.16.1.2, the DNS server, I'm told that the destination is unreachable. IP config slash all shows us that this PC has this IP address configured and it's a DHCP server and a default gateway are 192.168.1.254. That device is router one, and we can verify that by using the command show IP interface brief. Notice the IP address on gigabit 000. Now in this topology, IP addresses are not shown so I'm going to add IP addresses to the topology to make it easier to configure the static routes. We can see that this interface is configured with this IP address. Show IP route will also show us similar information, including the subnet masks used on interfaces. As an example, we can see that a slash 24 network is used on gigabit 000 as shown here, and this is the IP address configured on that interface. You could simply use a show run to see that information as well. Notice this IP address is configured on gigabit 000, and this IP address is configured on gigabit 001. So 192.168.2.1 is configured on that interface, again as shown here. Don't always rely on show run. Learn to use other commands, such as show IP route, and learn to interpret the output of the commands. We can see that this route is directly connected to gigabit 001, as shown there. This is the IP address configured on that interface. Notice also that no static routes or any other routes except connected and local routes are displayed in the routing table. Show IP protocol shows us that no routing protocols are enabled on router one. We can do something similar on router two. Show IP interface brief shows us the IP addresses configured on interfaces. Show IP route shows us the routing table. No static routes are configured on the router no IP routing protocols are enabled. We only see connected and local routes in the routing table. So show IP route once again. We can see that this IP address is configured on gigabit 000. So 192.168.2.2 is configured on that interface. As shown here, there's the IP address, there's the mask used. This is derived from the IP address configured on the interface. So this IP address is configured on gigabit 000 slash 24 mask. So hence in the IP routing table, we see this as a connected route. This is the actual IP address configured on that interface. Same as shown here, we can see the actual IP address and the subnet mask used on this interface. So 192.168.3.1 slash 24 is the IP address configured on that interface. And to confirm that, when we type show run, we can see the IP address and subnet mask on the interface. Let's have a look at router three. Interfaces have come up on router three. Show IP interface brief. We can see that this IP address is configured on gigabit 000. That's already shown in the topology diagram. This IP address is configured on this interface. Show IP route confirms that this IP address is configured on this interface. That's the subnet mask. So 192.168.3.2 slash 24 is configured on this interface. 
Okay, so looking at uh, the routing tables, once again, router one only knows about directly connected routes. It doesn't know about this network or this network. Notice the server is in the same subnet as router three, cisco.com, is also using an IP address in that subnet. So this is most likely configured as a layer two switch. Even though it says core two here, when I type show run, we can see that no configuration is configured on the switch apart from an IP address, which is actually incorrect for this lab, but won't affect what we're trying to accomplish here. So router one, only has directly connected and local routes in the routing table. The same is true for router two, as well as router three. We only have connected and local routes in the routing table. So on router one, we need to configure a static route for every network that's not directly connected. In other words, we need to create a static route for this network as well as this network. So IP route 192.168.3.0, subnet mask will be this. We've already determined that when we looked at the IP addresses and routes on the routers. But once again, show IP route shows us the route on router three. Now, what is the next hop or outgoing interface? we've been told to use next top IP addresses. So rather than using the local outgoing interface, we're going to specify the next hop, which is 192.168.2.2. From router one's perspective, to get to this network, it needs to send the traffic to router two. So as traffic is sent out of this interface, the next IP address that it's going to hit is this IP address. That's the next hop IP address. Now we could specify administrative distance. We are not asked to do that in this lab. So I'm not gonna configure an admin distance. Notice how the routing table has been updated. This route has been added to the routing table. It's a static route. This network is available via this next hop router Administrative distance is one. The cost to get there is zero. Static routes to next top IP addresses have an admin distance or administrative distance of one. So at this point, I should be able to ping this IP address on router two, which I can, but I won't be able to ping this IP address because router three doesn't know how to send the traffic back to router one. Router two can reply because this network is directly connected. Router two knows about this network. So it can reply back to pings sent from R1. When R1 pings 192.168.3.1, it uses the outgoing interface as the source IP address. In other words, this will be the source IP address for traffic sent from router one to router two, and router two knows how to get back to this IP address. So pings succeed, but they don't succeed to router three because router three doesn't know how to get back to this IP address. Okay, so show IP route on router one. We've got one static route configured. We still need to configure the static route 172.16.1.0, in other words, the segment. Now to get to that network, which once again we can see on router three, this network 172.16.1.0 slash 24, we need to send the traffic to router two. Router two is still our next top router to get to that destination network. Traffic sent from router one to any device in the subnet will firstly be sent to router two. This is the next top IP address. So show IP route, we now have two static routes in the IP routing table of router one. 
I'll save that configuration. Now in router 2, we need to do something similar. At the moment, there are only connected and local routes in the routing table. So IP route 192.168.1.0 subnet mask. This is a slash 24 subnet mask. From router 2's point of view, to get to this network, the next hop is router 1. So 192.168.2.1. From router 2's point of view, to get to this network, the next hop is this IP address. Once again, we only have 192.168.2.0 and 3.0 in the routing table. We have to add this network via a static route, and we have to add this network via a static route. So IP route 172.16.1.0 slash 24 mask, Next top will be 192.168.3.2. So show IP route. This router now has two static routes in the routing table. And at this point, it should be able to ping 192.168.1.1, which it can. It should be able to ping 172.16.1.1, which it can. And at this point, it should be able to ping the DNS server the DNS server is configured with router 3 as its default gateway. So traffic from here can get to here, to there, and back again. But notice on router 1, we still can't ping 172.16.1.2 because router 3 doesn't know how to send the traffic back to router 1. If we did a trace route to that IP address, notice the traffic gets to router 2 and then we have a timeout because router 3 doesn't know how to reply back to router 1. Traffic is not being returned to router 1. So the last step is to update the routing table of router 3.